Facebook, we are recording. Hey, Internet friends, Magic Brad, Synergy Cafe, and the Synergy Collaborative. And I'm here online again with a new friend, and her name is Rachel. Rachel, are you there? Hi, it's me. <laughs> How you doing, Brad? Where are you located? I am located in Southern California, up in the mountains. Uh-huh. It's kind of an oasis above the smog. Got it. Absolutely <laughs> lovely here. Good idea. I can just picture that the black cloud, and you're up on top in the nice clean air. <laughs> yeah, we have blue sky. Can you believe that? <laughs> Okay, like I mentioned um, how I do these interviews, I keep them real tight so we don't take people's too much of their time and they get to know who you are and a little bit of what you do. So the first thing is, who's Rachel? Do you got kids? You married? You are, you know, who are you? Oh my goodness, yeah. I've uh, uh, known my husband for 20 years coming up this July. We have a son who, as of this recording, is going to be turning 11 next week. He comes up to my eyebrows and wears the same size shoe as I do. And it actually, it's, it's been interesting because I do most of my work from home. And I try very hard to schedule things while my son's in school. And then I block out time when he gets home specifically to spend time with him. Because... I mean, one of the reasons I like working from home is being with him, and it forces me to be really focused to get done all the stuff I need to do so that I can still be there for him as well. And that, that's really important to me. Okay, well, that kind of segues into what is it that you do. So, so what, uh, what kind of work do you do? Um, I transform lives. I, <laughs> I love stories. I think stories. Stories, hold on a second, let me get my, I think stories are like incantations of perception. And I am fascinated by the fact that we can change our entire experience simply by the words that we choose to describe it. So if you're miserable in your life, listen to the words that you're using to talk about your life in your head to other people. What I do I write books, I do public speaking, I love introducing people to different ideas that will change the way that they look at their lives. And I also, uh, I do some one-on-one coaching work with people who know that they are on the brink of something really amazing and they just need a little bit of help to get them past that hump and into the lives they want to be living. Got it. I guess that's what I do. Give them that little nudge. So you're basically essentially a author, speaker, and coach. Yep, that's the triumvirate. Yeah, there we go. Yay. So um, where do you do this? Do you do this like online? you do it live in person? Or do you fly out to locations? I do. um, The the one-on-one work I do either phone or Skype or occasionally in person if you happen to be up in the mountains where I live. Um, the writing is online. My ebook's available in Barnes and Noble online and the Apple Store and it's also on Kindle and as a paperback in Amazon. The uh, the speaking, I'm going to be doing more video presentations, but it's primarily I love getting in front of a live audience because there's something about that interaction where it's not just me talking at at something, but it's like talking with, and there's this energy and this vibrance of being with people that I absolutely love. Okay. When do you do your work? I mean, a lot. Sometimes people are like early birds. Some are late night. When do you do your work, or are you like uh, whenever you want to do it? Well, <laughs> yes. As I said, I try to do most of the stuff that I schedule while my son's in school. But I also do stuff in the evenings. Uh, some of it's just when it needs to be done. One of the things I'm starting to take pride in is if I've only got 15 minutes, what can I do in that 15 minutes, whether it's outlining the next chapter or sketching something out or figuring out logistics, wherever I can fit it in, I just try to get it done. Got it. Efficient use of time, because it's true, sometimes you can uh, meditate at a red light, you know? Yes. (laughs) 
as long as you notice it changes color. <laughs> Eventually it does. So um, do you, how do you do your work? Uh, what kind of process do you use? Oh, goodness. My background, I've grown up absolutely immersed in psychology. My father's a clinical psychologist, and he studied under some of the founders and inspiration for neuro-linguistic programming. So whenever he learned something, he'd come home and practice it on me and my brother. We fixed most of it since then, but it really instilled with me a fascination with how people think. So my process, I do a lot of listening, whether it's in my own life or other people, and look for patterns. And do these patterns support where people say they want to be going? If those patterns don't seem consistent with, with, the, with where they say they want to go, how can we shift it? How can we change the stories, change the words, change the assumptions beneath the stories so that their path opens up before them? Sure, and I guess it's does also... Does that make the, any sense? Oh, it totally does. Um, that's a lot of what I'm on right now is uh, getting out of the head the thinking part because that's old information that you got to yeah. sort of untether from and using the heart to think of the new information that's... See, the, the way... The the way I put it, the mind is an excellent tool for asking questions, but the best answers come from the heart. Yeah, the mind's like a storage locker. <laughs> <laughs> so here's my favorite question, and I ask this to everyone, and that is the big why. Why is it that you do this? How come you're not a pharmacist, or how come you're not a farmer, <laughs> or, or maybe a professional pole vaulter or something. Why you do why do you do what you do? <laughs> because of my childhood the looking at how people do what they do, I've been very aware of challenges I've had in my own life. I have well, I know one of my problems when I was younger is I could see so many possibilities that I was afraid to take any of them because I thought, well, if I choose to go this direction, all of these other possibilities are going to be closed off behind me. And it was very hard. I, I felt paralyzed. And I know that was the impetus for my current book, the one that's just out that's called Navigating Life. Eight Simple Strategies to Guide Your Way, and it's for people who are going through the same thing. It's I've been through this journey. I still experience it because there's so many things that are pulling at us all the time, and I know I would have liked someone to have helped me. I get it. So you kind of like uh, you've gone there, so now you give them the road map and say this is how you kind of do this kind of thing instead of... Exactly. I know what you mean with that, but the plethora of information out there, you think, well, which way should I go? <laughs> yeah. He's got to pick one and end up there, I guess. Yep. So there this are, sort of... There will always be more doors. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. There's uh, absolutely. there's plenty of ways to go. It's infinite. Whatever you want to do, it's... Uh, you're, the world is an oyster, as they say. So before we close off, is there anything that you want to share, like a web domain or any upcoming projects, like you said, some of your books, how to get a hold of them and all that kind of thing, and uh, then we'll uh, close off. I would absolutely love if people would come visit my new website because I just it just went live a little while ago, and my web designer took amazing care of me, and I'm just showing it off to everybody. The It's called... It's www.thefullnessofyourpower.com. Thefullnessofyourpower.com. Dot com, yes. Got it. And it's, um, it ha I have a blog there. If you're interested in different ways of looking at your life, I explore different perspectives. Uh, there, I've actually got a free ebook that people can download if they go there, and there are links to navigating life and uh, other information as well. Perfect. Well, again, I appreciate you taking the time, Rachel, and um, 
good luck in the in the mountains up there above all the smog. You know, you, you won't want to come down because it's all dirty. <laughs> yeah, I know, but it's so good to come home. I know there is something unique about coming home. We're going to be migrating up to uh, the New York area right now. We're in Asheville. My wife's got a book in yeah. her head. She wants to rewrite write a, a book, and we're going to go up there for a few months so she can write. And because I'm mobile, you know, just use the old phone to do whatever you got to do. <laughs> I'm going with, and I'm going to hang out. <laughs> Sounds lovely. Yes. Adventures. Exactly. It's a journey. So appreciate you taking the time. And if you have other future projects you want to talk about, we can uh, reconnect at, a, at another time. So thanks again for visiting us at Synergy Cafe. Peace. Thank you so much. This has been lovely.